Hi. <laughs> I'm not going to light that candle. <laughs> I gather the fire detection stuff is uh, alarm thingy, whatever it is, smoke detector. Uh, very sensitive in, this, in these Premier Inns. I do not need to set off the fire alarm. Thank God. Right, here we go. Ha! Got a cameraman. Thy will be done. Well, it's in the Lord's Prayer, that's for sure. Our Father, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Well, <laughs> if you don't put your hand in God's hand, close your eyes, trust in the Lord, and allow God to guide you, whatever you do will not prosper. <clears throat> Still got a staff. <laughs> I know absolutely in my own life. If I try to do something and God doesn't want it to be, he just wipes me out. My spirit just sort of flops. Whereas, miraculously, Quite how it works, I've no idea. Things just happen, doors open, little things happen, little, little sort of positive feedback from life that you'd think, you know, how, how can God possibly organize such things in one's life? And then there are the big events and so on. So, thy will be done. So my... I, I'm in Newcastle here in a Premier Inn. There's this rubbish court case uh, today, 17th of February 2022. I've been made homeless for eight months, but I mean, I was. I've got a place in Annick, Northumbria, 35 miles north of. Newcastle, the north east a wild and woolly corner of Ingerland. Well, I've travelled the world trying to settle. I'm at home in Christ. That's what everything else is sort of irrelevant. So what if I sleep here or there? I mean, prior to this, particularly the year for what it's worth, 2008, I was galloping around all over the show. I think at the time, primarily Britain. I'd been off around the world already. And I blew some ridiculous amount of money in, in one year. I think it was £24,000 when I had money on hotel bills, primarily, travel. I mean, small hotels and bed and breakfast, but you try multiplying 50 by seven and you soon mount up the bills. I don't know how I got to 24,000 then. I think I went off to Ireland. I don't know, I, did, I just crashed around. What's it all about? The seeking God's will for me. So my biggest worry is... I've been made, booted out, the circumstances such as they are. I, I bear these people no ill will. I do not bear my former wife ill will, for heaven's sake. I was married. I mean, I can see how that might look. I know. I've thought it many a time. Here I am saying, my son committed suicide at the age of 18. He'd be 29 now. Well... My former wife told a pack of lies in an English court and then everything just followed on. 
back in 1993, the County Court of Central Milton Keynes, number 351 Silvery Boulevard. I spent acres of my life fighting about this. Obviously, I'm a bad man. Why did God put me with a woman who had been sexually abused by her father? Therefore, she had a pathological hatred of men locked in with in her. But it was all my fault. Well, but I can still see the point that the English legal system kicked in. His honour, honour judge, uh, judge O'Connor made his draconian decision to ban me from the family home and on it went. Well, I can see how God has worked through that personal tragedy in all of our lives. My mother was a maternity sister. She never knew her grandchild, for heaven's sake. Poor old darling. He's given me my faith, all right? The beard and the hair I will not cut until I die, until my dying day, because I'm living for my son, Robert Francis. Well, it's a very deep thing. Yes, I've got fire in me, you know. You tread on my toes hard enough and I will fire up, but I'll never strike you. And I certainly wouldn't strike a child with a staff. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So... There we are. As it happens, I'm actually in touch with the Scottish woman. Well, she's contacted me somehow, or whatever. I suppose I must have made a contact. Anyway, she's, you know, asking how I am now and stuff. But there was a Scottish neighbour and a Polish neighbour. The Scottish neighbour on St Michael's Square in Annick last year, I moved in the back end of May. <coughs> the plot so far. <laughs> boy oh boy Scottish neighbour sort of poor background Scotland near Glasgow Greenock or Gurukh wanted to go to her mother's grave I looked into hiring a car and it would cost quite frankly more so I bought this little Panda motor car for my Christian broadcasting place, you know, as an asset, I suppose. But essentially, for that woman, so Scottish woman, that had to be, and this Polish neighbour, and her partner. Well, he offered me drugs, weed, cannabis. Well, I won't have that. You know, I recognise it's dangerous. I've grasped to the police about it. And there are people who don't like that. Well, there we are. So what am I meant to do? Sit there, watching this stuff going on all around me, in the place in which I live. Well, that's not right. Not in the long term, it's not. And that's what it was about. I'm not going to go through all the blooming ins and outs of it. Right. The net result was I have been booted out of there on a bail condition for just a week short of eight months. Right. As a Christian... Was I being willful in going to Annick in the first place? For what it's worth, I have this little cross. I had a very nice flat in um, Harpenden, council, full tenancy, all of that stuff. Could afford the rent. And I was all settled, but it's not good enough in my spirit. The world's a mess. What have I done, me and myself, personally... This is the nub of the matter for me to make this world a better place for my passing.
I want to shed some light in the darkness. I'm not going to light this candle because the wick will go do this and the plumbing fire alarm thing is right at smoke detectors right there. And you can smell if you, if you, you know, they walk around. Have you been smoking? No, I wasn't smoking. I was just trying to burn the place down in my candle, but it's a nice candlestick. Anyway, that's what I want. Light. The light of Christ shining in the darkness. Seemingly, it's also about that. I wear a Christian tunic. I'm sort of monk-like. So I listen to these Carthusian monks. They're uh, virtually an entirely enclosed order. <coughs> uh, St. Bruno. So the date I have is 1084. The year 1084. They've got their, so their central uh, house, or whatever you call it, monastery, is in the sort of middle south in the mountains in France. I think they've got 20, 21 monks there living an almost entirely enclosed life of essentially prayer. So I listen to Midnight Vigils, which in fact goes on for over two hours I've got a sort of 50 minute version of it and they're, they're it's <laughs> Gregorian chant in Latin well it's beautiful so those human souls are just praying there they're just contemplating God alone well I choose not to do that I want to be in more or less the real world amongst ordinary people just getting on with my life. And I have to do that somewhere. None of us are getting any younger. I'm now 65. With various medical nonsense kicking in. You know, how do you invite people in an English winter? You, you can't, you can't have a, a, a Christian meeting, you know, under a banyan tree, under an oak tree or something in a field, for heaven's sake. The first thing I did at my this place, it's, it's a three-bedroom mid-terrace, so the, the main bedroom is my chapel. I think the Scottish woman attended once or something. She's a Roman Catholic background. I've avoided becoming a Benedictine monk, so thy will be done... Am I being willful? Never mind what's happened. I absolutely refuse to um, bear the Polish neighbour any ill will. If I don't, I mean, it eats up inside you. This is the essential bit I won't be able to say in court, really. They won't want to listen to all of this stuff. <coughs> but this is Christian teaching. If you come to pray to God, before you come to God, you must try to reconcile with your neighbor. We are human beings. So again, the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Well, if you don't love your neighbor, you don't have to like them. We're human beings, inevitably, personalities will clash and people will fall out amongst themselves. That is inevitable in human nature. But before you come to God, why should God listen to you if you're sitting there all the time planning and plotting to do your neighbour down? No good. So you must have this love within you. And I cherish it. I do not. Absolutely, I've, I've made sure I keep rooted. If it's ever entered my spirit, any thought of hating and, and wishing ill to my former wife. When they kept stuffing me in the police, I think I was arrested. I think, I think it's either four or possibly even five times. And I kept asking for the old Bible, <laughs> the same old. Bible because I knew because I'd started marking it up you get a pencil 
if you're lucky. And I went to Romans chapter 12, and you must love, love your neighbor, but love your enemies, feed them, water them, wish them a long life, and that they may repent of their evil ways. That was absolutely <clears throat> the first thing that entered my spirit. So, I'm, you know, as one does, you watch what you do in life, how you respond to <sighs> the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. So I'm perfectly clear that, you know, when I've lived out in the past, or when I've lived out in Staffordshire, I used to, on a regular basis, be attacked by youth, sort of 12, 13, 14 year olds, young people in Scotland, I've had it too, in the Highlands. Well, what's going on in their poor little spirits? I don't hate them, you know, I don't wish them ill. I just sort of pray for their, that they might see the light and realise that they're the sad ones. It's the sort of white crow syndrome. Who's this funny man in the funny clothes? Let's, let's attack him. He's a white crow. So the black crows attack the white crow. Anyway, <laughs> it's better I ramble on to my, my therapist. <laughs> uh, rather than taxing the poor magistrates with <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> right, thy will be done. So, we'll see. Okay, we'll see. Who knows? We'll see. As the grown-ups say. I am not getting my hopes up. My expectation is that I'd be staggered if I'm not guilty or not guilty, but the bail condition goes and I can just go back to my own place. That's plan A. Plan B is, quite frankly, if they ban me from Anik, well, I'll have to have a think about that. But I'm not thinking about it. I couldn't care less. It's ridiculous. The whole thing is ridiculous. Whatever the reason, I've definitely calmed down in the intervening period. But I'm a calm, quiet, gentle loving spirit give me half a chance for heaven's sake <laughs> cheerio